live. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, are we good? <coughs> now, now I have to cough. Now, the, now there's a recording. All right. So we have equilibrium one. Everything's fine. The water level stays the same. I heat it up. What happens to equilibrium number one? One word answer. Anyone? Someone be brave. Layla's kind of brave. What happens to equilibrium number one when I heat it up? Anyone? Yeah, well done, Ibrahim. It's destroyed. Why is it destroyed? Because the forward and the reverse reactions are no longer equal. Oh, yeah? Eventually, they will become equal again. And then we get equilibrium number two. Okay? What's different about equilibrium number two compared to equilibrium number one? I'll tell you. Equilibrium number two has more gaseous water in it. Is that clear? I'll be good. I'll be good. I'll be good. Excellent. Eric gets it. There's more. But how do we say that to each other? How do I say it to another chemist? Another chemist walks in and I have to tell them what's happened. Does anyone know? The, th the thing is, you all know what to say. You just don't know when we say this term. Oh, shall I tell you? When this happens, when you get more water going this way, this is when we use an awful expression, but this is what we say. We say the equilibrium has shifted to the right. That's what it means, okay? It simply means we've got more of that than the old equilibrium. Now, is it the same equilibrium? No, it is not. It is a brand new equilibrium. Yes, but we say, ah, the equilibrium shifts to the right. So when the reversible reactions don't have a balance, yes, exactly. That's exactly it, Layla. You have one equilibrium, you change the conditions, things move around, and you get a new equilibrium. It's not the same equilibrium. During the process of heating, there is no equilibrium. Exactly funny. There is not. Okay? The, the endothermic reaction is faster gets faster than the um, other one. What's the other one called? The exothermic reaction. Yeah. And the other one catches up. Why does it catch up? Because there's more molecules on that side. Does that make sense? You have an equilibrium. It is destroyed by a change in condition. And then you have a new equilibrium. Yes. Now, Listen to this very carefully. That is why we say the equilibrium shifts to the right or shifts to the left. If that didn't happen, Fanny, we wouldn't get a change in concentration, would we? If the equilibrium wasn't destroyed and then reformed, if, it, if the equilibrium just stayed there, nothing would change. The equilibrium has to be destroyed and then has to be reformed you know, as a different equilibrium. Does that make sense? Or have I just succeeded in confusing everyone? Funny, gets it? Anyone else? Are we good? Are we good? Yeah, it makes sense, but it's it's quite a complicated topic, eh? If you understand it as you should do, like I do, especially what if you want to do A-level chemistry, you, you've got to understand it, things like this. Now, let's go over to the left one. What happens if we cool it down? Let's have a look. All right, let me go H2O. Oh, that's not good, is it? What's going on there? Let's make it nice, shall we? Let's cool things down, and then we'll do some questions. H2O liquid, H2O gas. If I cool this down, this middle one down, and I cool it down to 10 degrees C, which reaction will slow down? Initially, which reaction will slow down? Anyone want to guess? Exactly, Eric. Well done. Evaporation will slow down. Okay. Why will evaporation slow down? Anyone? Why? Why is evaporation hurt by me slowing down the react? Uh, by me cooling the reaction? Because it's endothermic, exactly. What happens to, at, right at the start, what happens to the condensation? What happens to the condensation if I cool it down? 
No, 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 it doesn't get faster, guys. Yeah, strangely enough, it doesn't get faster. The condensation just remains the same. It's only, the only one that's affected by heat is the endothermic process because it needs heat to happen. Yeah, the exothermic process, ah, except for, um, for activation energy, it doesn't really need things. All right. So if the forward reaction slows down and the reverse reaction is the same, do we have an equilibrium here? Is there an equilibrium where I'm writing here? Yes or no? Is there one? No, there's no more equilibrium. So what happens when there's no equilibrium? Can you see which reaction is faster? And because the evaporation, it's not faster than it was, but the evaporation is now faster than the forward reaction. So what happens to my water level? If you think about it, what's going to happen? It's going to increase, isn't it? Because this is faster. Yes. Now, what's going to happen to molecules of, of water in the air? What's going to happen to the molecules of water in the air? The amount of them. Anyone want to tell me? What happens to the way? It reduces. And because of that, eventually, because there's getting less and less in the air, what happens? to the rate of condensation eventually. Anyone? Yeah, it, it gets slower and slower and slower. So this one, that's the rate of uh, evaporation. But eventually the rate of condensation will slow down because there's not enough to in there to condense. They've all gone. There's not enough there. So we have, what should we call this down here? I'm going to call this equilibrium number three. And what can you tell me about equilibrium number three? It contains more liquid water. The water level has increased here. It contains more liquid water. And as one chemist would say to another, the equilibrium has shifted to the left. Yes? Do we get these concepts? And then we'll do the questions now. Are we good with these concepts? Are we good? Yeah, Layla's good. you got to be honest, though, guys. Honestly, even though you're a bit confused, it's a, this is a tricky subject, eh? Seriously. So I'm going to get rid of that. Don't worry, I've recorded it. And I've got some questions for you. They're not hard. We'll do them together. All right. I don't want to be here too long because it's painful listening to me all the time. Trust me, I know. All right, there's a nice reaction. This is the kind of thing we have to do. All right, so if we understand this, we're looking good. All right, iodine reacts with chlorine to form a dark brown uh, iodine monochloride. And there's the reaction. Okay, iodine. Let me get a nice black pen for this. Oh, I don't know what that was. All right, so this is the first reaction. This is uh, iodine monochloride, iodine plus chlorine. This reacts with more chlorine to give a yellow uh, to give the yellow iodine trichloride this guy here. As you can see, it's a solid. All right, this is an equilibrium between these two chlorides. This is an equilibrium here, as you can see. Okay, all right. It's a reversible reaction. There you go. What do we mean by equilibrium? Right, if we had to answer this, there's two ways of answering this, and we shouldn't do them both. But an equilibrium is established when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Okay, now that's one. That will give you one mark. What happens to the concentration of everything when you have a exactly? Well done, they were saying concentrations of both reactants and products remain unchanged. Okay, that's pretty cool. Two marks, easily. To be honest with you, that alone will probably give you two marks, but we're just making it perfect. When the equilibrium mixture is heated, it becomes darker. Okay, is the reverse reaction endothermic or exothermic? Now look at this equation here. Which way does it have to go to get darker? Which way? Does it go to the right or does it go to the left to get darker? 
Anyone? I keep getting notifications on my phone. Anyone want to answer that? What's going on? Anyone? So when it shifts to the left or right, is there a slight... Hold on. <laughs> Where's Layla? Layla's gone. Hold on, Layla. <laughs> Layla. Layla's gone on my thing. When equilibrium shifts to the left or right, is there a slight chance in how much reactions? I don't know what that means, dear, to be honest with you. Darling, I think what you're doing, Layla, I think you're overcomplicating things. It's a lot easier than you think. Just relax, eh? So, <clears throat> first of all, Ibrahim's got it. Left, left, left. Finally, it says left. So, if it goes darker, the equilibrium must have gone that way, to the left. In other words, we get more of this, yeah? What did we do to get more of this? Well, we heated it, yes? And if we heated it and the equilibrium shifted left, what does that mean about the reverse reaction? Exactly, Layla. Don't put a question mark, dear. You're quite right. The reversible reaction must be endothermic because it's the one that was that it went that way, didn't it? It's the ones that gets faster. So it must be the reverse reaction must be endothermic because it shifted left when we heated it. Okay, so the reversible reaction, sorry, not the reversible. That's rubbish, isn't it? I should have said the reverse reaction must be endothermic. Give a reason for your choice. Well, on heating, equilibrium shifted left so reverse reaction must be endothermic i hope that makes sense all right is it endothermic because it's breaking bonds well uh yeah it's getting it, <laughs> uh, Layla, you want to ask a nasty question there. It is breaking bonds in the um, ICL3, but it's also making bonds in ClCl2. Now, the, the reason, the thing that makes it endothermic going backwards, yeah, we are breaking bonds. We're using the energy to break bonds, but also uh, the bonds being made aren't giving out as much energy. Okay. It's an it's a balanced thing. There is more going in than coming out. Does that make sense, dear? Let me draw a reaction profile because uh, Layla's got a very good question there. Let's have a look at this. Okay. Oh, that's not good. Here we go. All right. Now this is energy, and this is something called we call reaction coordinate. We don't have to worry about that too much. All right, now, obviously, I've lost the reaction. Right, ICL plus CL2. So we start off here. And let's do this. ICL plus CL2. And then we end up with, and I obviously, oh, I think it's uh, iodine trichloride, isn't it? So we end up with ICL3. Yeah, now... The forward reaction goes from this. These are the reactants for the forward reaction. And this is the products for the forward reaction. Okay, and then we get this. That's the reaction profile. Okay, so for the forward reaction, down. Okay, delta H is negative. But for the reverse reaction, delta H is positive. All right. Now, let's have a look at this. For the reverse reaction, can you see what's interesting about the reverse reaction? Does the reverse reaction take more or less activation energy? What, what does the reverse reaction do? Can anyone see? No, no, no. We don't do more molecules on the right than the left here. We don't do that yet. We're not talking about that yet, Layla. We're, that's um, that's a concentration thing. Anyway, so let me not talk about the uh, activation energy because I don't want to confuse you. But <clears throat> if I give this energy, what do I get? I end up, if I give ICO, I get I atoms 
a CL atom, a CL atom, and a CL atom. Okay, so this direction, I have to give it this much energy to break. I break an ICL bond and a CLCL bond. Okay, and it costs me X. Now, this reaction, the forward reaction, I form an ICL bond, I form another ICL bond, and I form another ICL bond. Okay, now looking at this equation or looking at my diagram, which is harder? Is it harder for me in terms of energy to break ICL and a CLCL bond, or is it harder to break? an ICL, an ICL, and an ICL. Does anyone understand what I'm talking about? I don't quite know if I understand. Which is harder? Which requires more energy? Anyone want to say? Which one? The breaking ICL, 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 or breaking ICL, CL, and CL? And so, I think I'm confusing you. All right. It's going this way. To break the bonds, that's right, Fanny. To break bonds cost me X. And to make bonds, I get given out Y. Now, can you see X is smaller than Y? So in other words, more... Oh, sorry, let me get rid of that. Oops, wrong one, wrong one. Let me get rid of that. Okay, if... So because this is bigger, more energy is given out in making these bonds than is used up. Okay, if more energy is given out than is used up, Y is bigger than X, and so therefore the forward reaction, the forward reaction is exothermic. Do you see that? Am I just confusing everyone? We're we bringing in uh, energetics to this a little bit. Are we good? I think I might, I might easily just be confusing you. All right. I'm, am I? <laughs> sure? Yeah. All right. Let's forget about that. I think I'm messing you up, aren't I? <laughs> all right. Forget about that. All right. Let me go. All right. Let's get rid of this rubbish. Ooh. Okay. Do we understand this? We're, we're good with this, though. Yeah. You know what, Eric? It's a beautiful subject, but let's not go with too harsh into it. Okay, so let's forget about the energetics thing. All right, so let me get another one. Honestly, I think I messed up by, whoopsie daisy, I think I messed up by showing you that. So don't worry about that. Okay, there's another one here. Don't worry, we'll fix it. Okay, <laughs> I always do this. I always mess up by going too complicated. And everyone shouts at me in the end. All right, the pressure. Now, let's have a look. Now, here we go. We can't remember the equation, so I'll write it here. It's ICL, okay. oh, no, it's not. ICL liquid plus Cl2 gas gives ICL3 solid. The pressure is decreased. How would this affect the position of equilibrium and why? Now, if I decrease the pressure, which way will the equilibrium go? Anyone? It will go left or right? It will go left. Do we, un do we understand why it goes left? Anyone? It's a funny rule, this. Oh, funny, you don't. That's good. Okay. Let me do the rule at the bottom. Let's say if we increase pressure... Okay, the reaction will go from where there are more gaseous molecules to where there are less. That's if we increase the pressure. If we decrease the pressure, it's the reverse of this. Reaction will go from where there are less gaseous molecules to where there are more, to where there are 
more. Okay, it always does this. So, where are there more gaseous molecules in this equation? Where there are where are there more gaseous molecules? Gaseous molecules, funny. Which side has the more gaseous molecules? This side we call the left hand side. This side we call the right hand side. Which side has the more gaseous molecules? The left. Uh, we can all see that. So if I increase the pressure, which way would the equilibrium go? What, which way would the, um, the equilibrium go if I increase the pressure? That's right. We go to the, oh, no, Eric, it would go to the right, Eric. If I increase the pressure, it goes from where there are more to where there are less. There's none on the right. There's no gaseous molecules on the right. So, so but we're not, that's if we increase the pressure. Let me get a different color. That's if we increase the pressure. But this particular one wants us to decrease the pressure. So which rule do we use? Uh, there is a rule. There is a reason for the rule. I don't know if I want to get into it, though, because um, uh, anyway, we'll talk about maybe we'll talk about the rule in a minute, why it works. OK, so if I decrease the pressure, what are we going to get? So if I decrease the pressure, it goes from where there are less this side to where there are more on this side. Are we good? Let me have a look. Is there a reason for the rule? Yes, there is. Is an increase in pressure favours the side with the less number of moles? Uh, it's got to be gaseous moles, eh? All right. But yes, you're right. It will, it will favour the side with the least number of gaseous moles, not moles, gaseous moles. Does that make sense, it was saying? It's got to be gaseous moles. So which way would it move in this case? Well, it would move to the left. And what's the reason? Number of gaseous moles on the left-hand side is, well, let me say that, let me do it nicely. Number of gaseous molecules on the left-hand side is greater than on the right-hand side. So decrease in pressure shifts left. That's all you've got to know. Now, you and I ask a very good question. Um, if you've got more gaseous molecules there, what happens is if you increase the pressure, it affects those more than if you have less. All right. I don't want to go into this too much, but if you increase the pressure on a gaseous reaction, it squishes them together and it, it goes, uh, what happens? It moves to the side with the least gaseous molecules. Okay. Now, I don't want to use something called Le Chatelier's principle because I don't think we really need it at Form 5. All you have to know is these two rules here. You and I hope that makes sense. If you do A-level, we'll talk about it then. Eh? But if you increase the pressure, it goes from where there are more to where there are less. If you decrease the pressure, it goes from where there are less to where there are more. But it must be gaseous molecules. Are we good with that? Yes? So, does anyone remember what we would observe? Could anyone remember the right, uh, the left-hand side? I can't remember. I mean, I'm going to have a look. Oh, yeah, I can remember now. What will we see with our eyes? Anyone? Does anyone remember? What would we observe? Products of dark. Yeah. Um. Oh, hold on. I don't know if you can do both of that. Let's have a look. No. Uh, yeah. Hey. Here we are. Copy that. Let me move this up. Whoops. It is. I've messed that up, haven't I? So let's move that up and see what the equation says. So if the equilibrium shifts to the left, what's going to happen? What are we going to see? We're going to see, anyone know? See that? The liquid gets darker, yeah. What happens is it gets darker brown, eh? All right. So the equilibrium shifts to this side. So we get a darker brown color. We get a darker brown color. Oh, it's not, it's not that. I was putting it in the wrong place. It should be in here, shouldn't it? What would I observe? Darker brown. 
color. Make sense? All right, I want to get rid of that one. Let's go to the next one if we can. So it's not, honestly, these aren't hard. Let's have a look. We've done that one. Let's have a look at this one. Let's have a look at if we can do a quicker one now. Okay, so let's have a look. I don't want to go too long because I, I understand you're all tired and you, this is no fun if you want to uh, do something else. So we won't be much longer. At most temperatures, samples of nitrogen dioxide are in equilibrium. There you go. There's a new one. Oh, look at that. Dark brown, pale yellow again. The one on the left is called nitrogen dioxide. The one on the right is called dinitrogen tetroxide. At 25 degrees C, the mixture contains 20% of nitrogen dioxide. At 100 degrees C, that has risen to 90%. Is the Ford reaction exothermic or endothermic? Right, so read that question for me and see if we can answer. Okay, now at 25, we've got 20% of this. But at 100, we've got 90% of this. Yeah. So first of all, what have I done? I've heated up. I've heated up from 25 to 100. And which way has the equilibrium shifted? Anyone? 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 We started off with 20%. We heat it up. Exactly. It shifted left because it was 20%. But then I heat it up and it goes to 90%. So the equilibrium has gone this way. Okay. Now, what therefore must it mean for the reverse reaction? If I heated this up and the equilibrium shifted left, what does that mean about the reverse reaction? It is. Well done, Ipuseng. It is endothermic. So, Ipuseng, look at the question. Is that the answer? Endothermic. Anyone want to read the question and tell me? It's not the answer, is it? Can we see why? Anyone? 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 Be brave. Chemist is always brave. Yeah, the forward reaction is exothermic. Now, what this tells us, this rubbish, it tells us the reverse reaction is endothermic. Because endothermic, why? Because on heating, it shifted left. But because the reverse reaction is endothermic, it doesn't want the reverse reaction. It wants the forward reaction. So we've got to say forward reaction is therefore exothermic. I hope that makes sense to everyone. Are we good with that? Explain why the color of the equilibrium mixture becomes lighter when the pressure on the mixture is increased. Ooh, so let's have a look at this. We've got 2NO2 gives N2O4. Okay, they're gases and gases. This side is brown. This side is yellow. Yellow is lighter than brown. Okay, so first of all, why the color of the equilibrium mixture becomes lighter? First of all, which way does the um, equilibrium shift? If it becomes lighter, which way must the equilibrium have shifted? Yeah, it must have gone to the right. So when the pressure was increased, equilibrium shifted right. Okay. Why did the equilibrium shift right? Now, how many gaseous molecules on the left? Anyone? Anyone? How many gaseous molecules on the left? This is the left-hand side. Exactly, this is the right-hand side. So there are two gaseous moles or molecules on the left-hand side, which is greater than one gaseous mole on the right-hand side. Increase, 
in pressure, uh, shifts, equilibrium from where there are more to where there are. Oh, my pens are all horrible. Are less. Does that make sense? Are we all good with that? So that's why the equilibrium shifts to the right, because it goes uh, from where there are more to where there are less. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. Are we good? Yeah. All right, one last one. Last one, everyone. I think you've done very well for sticking with me for this long. Okay, so let's put this one on. All right, let's do this very quickly. Carbon monoxide and CO2 give uh, carbon chloride. There you go, up there. And let's have a look at some of the questions here. Two methods of preparing carbon monoxide are from methane and oxygen and from methane and steam. The reaction between methane and oxygen can also form carbon dioxide. How can carbon monoxide be made instead of carbon dioxide? Anyone know? That's nothing to do with our question, is it? But how would you make carbon monoxide instead of... Um, carbon dioxide in that method what would you do how would you change the conditions anyone very quickly i'm tired you're tired let's get this out of the way how would you make carbon monoxide rather than carbon dioxide anyone 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 no i think we're all tired aren't we how would you make carbon monoxide rather than carbon dioxide yeah, exactly. You'd ha you'd decrease the amount of oxygen. You would have insufficient oxygen, and yeah, I'm going to write that down because it's an excellent answer. You have insufficient oxygen, okay, and we would have something called incomplete combustion. That's what you want, okay, because you want carbon monoxide. Now, this is our uh, equilibrium question. The following reaction is used to make carbon monoxide and hydrogen. The reaction is carried out at very hot, that is hot, and under normal pressure. The reaction is reversible and comes to equilibrium. Suggest so why a high temperature is used. Why do you think we need a high temperature? Anyone? Why would a high temperature? What were, are we going to do? Anyone? Why would we need a high temperature for this? What do you think the forward reaction is? Is it endothermic or exothermic? Do you think it's, an, it's a reversible reaction and we want to make these things. We want to make carbon, dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So why do you think we use a high temperature? Exactly. Um, oh, no, darling. I was going to agree with you. The reason we use a high temperature is because the forward reaction is endothermic. Ooh. How do you spell endothermic? Something like this, anyway. It's close enough. The forward reaction is endothermic. Okay. What does that mean in terms of the bonds? Now, let's go a step up here. It needs it needs energy. So we need a lot of energy to force it over because it's endothermic. All right. And if in reaction is endothermic, it means this. It means the energy used to break bonds in the reactants must be greater than the energy released when bonds are formed in the products. Now, I, we're not doing energetics today, but that's why it is endothermic, because it takes more energy to break the bonds than uh, that we get forming the bonds. So we have to put a lot of energy in to push the reaction over. Okay, we're nearly done, guys. You've done a very good job, seriously. This is the last thing. All right, this is a silly answer, really. I can see the question. All right, let's have a look at this. And does anyone know this? What is the disadvantage of using a high pressure for that for a reaction? Does anyone know what's a what's a disadvantage? Yeah, it's very very expensive. You have to change everything in the plant. Yeah, it's a disadvantage. Um, it's expensive. You need to make everything pressure proof and stuff like that. Yeah, but have a look at the equation though. 
how many gaseous molecules on the left and how many gaseous molecules on the right? Anyone? Last question. How many gaseous molecules on the left? And how many gaseous molecules on the right? Exactly two and four. So what would a high pressure do? Anyone? Anyone? It will shift it to the left because there's four on the right and two on the left. So a high pressure would do what to the equilibrium and shift it to the left. And if the equilibrium shifts to the left, what would that do to the yield of the reaction? What would happen to the yield if the equilibrium was shifted to the left? Well done, Leila. It would decrease the yield. So we don't want to use high pressure, do we? So they're saying, what would be the disadvantage of a high pressure? We would get the yield would be lowered. Why? Because two gas molecules or moles on the left-hand side is less than the four gaseous moles on the right hand side so an increase in pressure would shift the equilibrium to the left okay now ladies and gentlemen i don't know about you guys but i think you've done very well and i, I i'm very tired oh let me switch off the recording